I'm Raymond Goh, and this is Nightline. News making the headlines. Review financing terms for easier home ownership, PM tells Bank Nagara. And over 8,000 permanent posts for doctors from 2022 to 2025. Good morning. Bank Negara Malaysia BNM has been told to review home financing models to facilitate housing ownership for M40 and bottom B40 income groups in line with a one-family, one-home target. Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said this was among the decisions made at the National Affordable Housing Council MPMMN virtual meeting, which he chaired on Thursday to discuss the direction taken as well as the coordination and monitoring of affordable housing plans nationwide under the campaign. In a statement, Datu Sri Ismail Sabri pointed out that the move was to ensure financial institutions allow easier financing for the B40 and M40 groups to own people's housing projects, PPR units, and other affordable homes. He added that the focus will be on direct purchase and rent-to-own options. In addition, the Prime Minister said the Council also agreed to set a new direction for PPR housing by taking into account current needs as well as including new components towards realising the Livable Malaysia agenda. He also said new PPR projects will look into elements such as connectivity and internet access, public transport network, as well as designs that are more economical and comfortable. The Prime Minister revealed the meeting also discussed strategies for the implementation of 500,000 affordable housing units nationwide throughout the 12 Malaysia Plan, involving the federal government, state governments and private housing developers. This was also in line with the government's commitment to providing adequate and quality affordable housing to meet the needs of Malaysia's growing population. As such, the Housing and Local Government Ministry has introduced the Home Ownership Programme, or HOPE, to ensure a more comprehensive ecosystem for housing development and financing, as well as programmes that can help the Malaysian family own homes. The Ministry and the Real Estate and Housing Developers Association Malaysia, REDA, were also tasked with addressing concerns on the rising costs of construction material, such as iron and steel, as well as cartels controlling the construction industry. Meanwhile, Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said various indicators are clearly showing that the country is on an excellent track towards recovery from the health and economic crisis that began two years ago. In a thread of tweets on his official Twitter account on Thursday, the Prime Minister said Malaysia recorded a resilient export performance with export value surpassing the 100 billion ringgit mark to hit a new record of 123.8 billion ringgit. This was also a 29.2% year-on-year growth. He added the American Malaysian Chamber of Commerce, AmCham, has confirmed that U.S. firms have invested 165.73 billion ringgit and created more than 130,000 job opportunities, of which 90% were filled by locals. In addition, the International Trade and Industry Ministry has approved projects worth 109.1 billion ringgit within the first 100 days of his administration to increase foreign investment in the manufacturing sector, with the projected creation of 25,000 jobs. Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri also said that through the Jamin Kerja Keluarga Malaysia Initiative, the government would provide 600,000 job opportunities through an allocation of 4.8 billion ringgit. The Cabinet has approved the creation of 8,686 extra posts for medical, dental and pharmaceutical officers. Announcing this on Thursday, Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin said 4,186 4, additional permanent posts will be created in the ministry this year. 
According to Kyrie, the move covers the appointment of a total of 3,586 medical, 300 dental, as well as 300 pharmaceutical officers, and appointments for these additional permanent posts will be made beginning June 2022. He added the cabinet also agreed that at least 1,500 permanent posts of medical officers, dental officers and pharmacists would be created in the ministry each year from next year to 2025. In addition, the cabinet also gave its nod for 800 permanent positions for medical specialists and 70 for dental experts to be created yearly starting in 2023 to cover the output of permanent specialists at health facilities under the ministry. 800 permanent appointments for medical officers and 70 dental officers could also be made each year to fill the vacancies left by medical officers who were appointed as physicians. Ini merupakan satu new deal ataupun tawaran baru yang akan kita menawarkan kepada junior doctors supaya mereka boleh bersaing untuk mendapat peluang yang saksama bagi pelantikan ke jawatan tetap. Kita akan mengiklankan jawatan-jawatan ini secara terbuka pada bulan Februari ini dan ianya adalah terbuka kepada mereka yang sudah tamat latihan siswazah berdaftar penuh dengan Majlis Perubatan Malaysia dan tiada kes tata tertib dan disahkan sihat untuk dilantik. Kairi said this in the press conference after holding a dialogue session with the Malaysian Medical Association MMA in Putrajaya. He also said the candidates will go through preliminary screening and recruitment will be done in a transparent and fair manner, with the process to be refined before being announced by Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah. A road map was also being developed by the Health Ministry, together with the relevant agencies and ministries, to find short, medium and long-term solutions to the crisis involving those appointed on contract, and developments on the matter will be announced from time to time. The Health Ministry will start administering COVID-19 vaccines in schools nationwide from Monday under the National COVID-19 Immunisation Programme for Children, or PIC Kids. Deputy Health Minister Dr. Dr. Noor Azmi Ghazali said this is to ensure children aged 5 to 11, whose parents have given their consent, can be vaccinated directly and in a more targeted manner. Jadi target kita juga ialah untuk mencapai 50% eh? pada ujung bulan ini satu benda yang uh, uh, yang yang bukan senang tetapi benda yang possible kalau kita betul-betul nak buat sebab kita ada vaksin yang cukup vaksin kita cukup dan datang staggered tiap tiap minggu kita ada tenaga kerja kita dah ada kejayaan pun ha, kita telah capai uh, sembilan uh, <coughs> Uh, untuk remaja 88% lebih hampir 90% dan untuk uh, adult population 97%. Dato Dr. Noor Azmi added that PIC Kids is being implemented because studies have found the vaccination to be 90.7% effective with few side effects. He also stressed that the government is very concerned about the safety of children, which is why the vaccination is important to protect them from the risk of infection. Although most children who were tested positive with COVID-19 do not belong to the serious infection category, some had been admitted to intensive care units after being infected, and there were also cases of fatalities involving children due to the virus. The Omicron wave. Will it be yet another challenging year for shopping malls? Plans to reopen international borders. How will this impact shopping tourism? And strategies to attract new foreign retailers. Money Matters with the president of Malaysia Shopping Malls Association, Tan Sri Pio Chiang Kok, this Saturday at 5 p.m., only on TV Tiga.
Higher Learning Institutions, IPTs, are allowed to conduct their teaching and learning sessions in a hybrid manner or online, but it is subject to the decision of the university itself. The Higher Education Ministry said IPTs also needed to have the required capacity to accommodate students who attend their classes physically with strict compliance to the Standard Operating Procedures, SOP. According to the Ministry, in a statement on Thursday, the decision was made to provide flexibility to IPTs in determining the appropriate mode of learning, besides giving students the opportunity to get to know and adapt to the learning system and life on campus. The Ministry also gave its assurance that the safety and health of students remained a priority, adding that it will ensure the smooth return of students to their campus. Students were also urged to observe physical distance and practice good hygiene while on campus and all sports and recreational activities must adhere to the SOP stipulated by the Health Ministry. The statement came following the announcement made by the government on Wednesday that students of IPTs under the Higher Education Ministry will be allowed to return to their campuses in stages beginning March 1st. However, the numbers will range from 70% to 100% depending on their capacities. Foreigners who have been living in Sabah for many years are to be issued a special card for identification. Home Minister Datu Sri Hamza Zainuddin said this is following a proposal by Chief Minister Datu Sri Hajiji Noor during a meeting on the management of foreigners in Sabah. Datu Sri Hamza said this to the media after chairing the first Sabah Foreign Nationals Management Main Committee meeting 2022 with Datu Sri Hajiji in Putrajaya on Thursday. So at least uh, when kita tahu dia warga asing, sekurang-kurangnya kita boleh menggunakan mereka sebagai tenaga kerja. Uh, dan daripada situ nanti kita boleh jadikan mereka sebagai terbagi uh, kad pekerja. Dengan menggunakan kad warga asing tadi lah. Sekurang-kurangnya dia boleh bekerja. Bila dia boleh bekerja, dia boleh bayar yuran persekolahan anak-anak. And this is what we are supposed to do in the future. Jadi kita lakukan ini ada sikap keperimanusiaan itu. He, however, stressed that the card for foreigners in Sabah would not give them a permanent resident status or citizenship. He said the aim is to start issuing the card in three months' time and that the state government is going through its data to determine the number of recipients. Dr. Sri Hamza also said that the meeting on Thursday agreed that the enforcement be made through concerted operations coordinated by the National Security Council, Sabah, and to be intensified to stop the influx of undocumented migrants into Sabah. In another development, Dr. Sri Hamza confirmed that former Bangladesh High Commissioner Mohammad Karu Zaman is currently detained by the authorities. Without disclosing what offence Mohammad Karu Zaman was arrested for, the Home Minister said the arrest of the former diplomat was carried out in accordance with existing legal procedures. Mengikut perundangan, kalau ada kesalahan, kita tangkap. Kalau ada permintaan, daripada negara asal kalau kita rasa ada kebenarannya kita lakukan segalanya apa yang kita lakukan adalah mengikut prosedur He said this when asked to comment on the detention of Muhammad Kairu Zaman as reported by the international media on Thursday. According to media reports, Muhammad Kairu Zaman, who is reported to be living in Malaysia as a refugee, was detained at his home in Ampang on Wednesday and is expected to be sent home to Bangladesh. Still to come on Nightline, police busted syndicate over male lewd videos. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Nightline. Turkey expects bilateral trade with Malaysia to reach 5 billion US dollars by 2025 and gradually hit 10 billion dollars. According to Turkish ambassador to Malaysia, Merve Safa Kavakci, the growth in bilateral trade will be driven by the expansion of the free trade agreement between both countries, which is targeted to complete by the middle of this year. When we look at Malaysia, we do not just uh, see Malaysia, we see it as a hub, a, a gateway to the larger ASEAN and the region. And we would like for Malaysia to see Turkey, not just as Turkey, as Turkey with its new uh, official name, uh, but rather as a hub uh, to Middle East, to Africa, and to Europe and American market as well. Earlier, the Turkish ambassador led a delegation to Media Prima Burhat. On hand to give Kavakci and her delegation a first-hand briefing were MPB Group Chairman Dr. Sri Said Hussein al Junit, Group Managing Director Rafik Razali, Rev Media Group Chief Executive Officer Samuel Wee, and New Straits Times Group Editor Ahmad Lokman Mansour. Last year, bilateral trade between both countries grew by almost 50 percent to $3.5 billion despite the pandemic. The top three Malaysian products exported to Turkey are palm oil, aluminium and medical gloves. Johor police have busted a syndicate that extorts money from men using the victim's nude videos involving losses totaling 485,013 ringgit. State Police Chief Datu Kamaru Zaman Mamat said police have received 367 such reports since 2021 and have opened 144 investigation papers. Dengan membuat ugutan melalui video video yang dirakam semasa mereka berkomunikasi dengan satu sindiket iaitu sehingga sehinggalah mangsa ini sanggup berbogel di hadapan video tersebut dan dirakam oleh sindiket dan digunakan oleh sindiket untuk mengunggup dan untuk uh, mendapatkan wang daripada mangsa-mangsa uh, tersebut. He said most of the victims are men in their 20s and 40s and the syndicate has been active since early 2021. He also said following the reports, police had launched Ops Bugil and arrested seven suspects, including three local men and a foreign man. Dato Kamarul Zaman added that the suspects aged between 25 and 54 were arrested in Pelopinang, Selangor, Kuala Lumpur and Johor. Police are still on the hunt for several other members of the syndicate. <laughs> Meanwhile, three doctors and three nurses were among 25 people arrested nationwide in connection with cheating cases involving the sale of fake COVID-19 vaccination certificates. The latest case was in Sabah, where clinic staff lodged a police report against a doctor for cheating in connection with the sale of vaccine certificates in Kinarut. Police then arrested a 37-year-old doctor at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport on Monday. Authorities also received two reports in Selangor in connection with a fraud case involving the sale of COVID-19 test kits, which caused about 710,000 ringgit in losses. Investigations into the cases were almost completed and police will refer to the deputy public prosecutor for the proposed charges and further instruction. In Johor, two foreign women were among seven people arrested in raids in Johor Bahru, which led to the seizure of drugs worth 1.04 million ringgit. Authorities say the suspects, comprising five men and two women, aged 22 to 56, were rounded up in the raids conducted between 3 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Saturday. Over 3 kilograms of ecstasy powder and 17.7 kilograms of magic mushroom drugs were seized, along with three vehicles and cash totaling 21,850 ringgit. All the suspects have been remanded for seven days from February 6 to 12 for investigation under the Dangerous Drugs Act. In Perak, a 51-year-old man was charged in the Ipoh Magistrate Court with the murder of his wife last month. No plea was recorded from Ibrahim Abdullah. 
when the charge was read out to him before Magistrate Jessica Dimes, as the case falls under the purview of the High Court. The accused allegedly murdered Fatima Manikam Abdullah, aged 44, at their house in Kampung Towers between January 26 and the following day. The charge under the penal code carries a mandatory death sentence if convicted. The court set April 13th for re-mention. Switzerland to vote on becoming first country to outlaw animal testing. This and more when Nightline returns. Thanks for staying with us on Nightline. Switzerland is voting on Sunday whether to become the first country to completely ban medical testing on animals. This after animal rights campaigners gathered enough support to stage a referendum in the country which hosts a huge pharmaceutical sector. The result of the referendum is expected to be binding. However, the ban is not expected to pass to the relief of the pharmaceutical sector, which has warned the move would halt new drug development and force companies and researchers to relocate abroad. Pharmaceuticals lobby group says the sector contributes 9% to the Swiss economy, including indirect effects, and generates nearly half of Swiss exports. According to government statistics, to date, more than 550,000 animals died in laboratory tests in 2020 in Switzerland. The figure includes 400,000 mice and rats, nearly 4,600 dogs, 1,500 cats and 1,600 horses. Primates, cows, pigs, fish and birds were also killed during and after experiments. Japan's biggest wave of COVID-19 cases to date is showing signs of peaking, though authorities are extending virus curbs into next month to try and bring down the rate of hospitalizations. According to officials, health centers would now shift towards focusing on care for the elderly and those at risk of developing serious illness. And while infections are still increasing, there's a relative slowing trend among working people in their 20s and 30s. Japan will on Friday begin a long weekend that has in the past coincided with increases in cases, prompting Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to extend virus curbs in Tokyo and 12 prefectures that had been due to expire on Sunday until March 6. Tokyo reported eight 18,287 new infections on Wednesday, down from a record 21,576 on February 2nd in the first week-on-week -week decline in almost two months. In the meantime, the Philippines on Thursday welcomed back more than 200 foreign tourists becoming the latest Southeast Asian nation to reopen 
in a bid to revive a battered tourism sector after nearly two years' ban on foreign travellers. Starting Thursday, fully vaccinated travellers from 157 visa-free countries and regions were welcomed back into the country. However, the Philippine government requires the incoming foreign tourists to present proof of complete vaccination, a negative RT-PCR test at least 48 hours before their departure, a return ticket and a passport valid for six months. The pandemic has badly hit the tourism sector in the Philippines, forcing hotels and airlines to lay off staff. To date, the pandemic had affected almost 1.1 million workers in the tourism industry across the country. Mariners and MacArthur in thrilling A-League draw. The action after this breather. Sports now. Central Coast Mariners and MacArthur FC shared the points after a 3-3 draw in an A-League tie on Thursday at Central Coast Stadium, Australia. Tommy Orr opened the scoring for MacArthur in the 25th minute. Adrian Mariapa then poked in for his first top-flight goal since 2013, before Alexander Susanja's own goal brought the home side back into the contest. MacArthur's work was nearly all undone when Moody Najjar gave away two penalties in the space of nine minutes late on. Oliver Bozanic and Brazilian striker Moreski scored their respective spot kicks and the Mariners looked to be home until Craig Noon sensationally levelled in the 90th minute. The result means the Bulls now stand at fifth place on the table with 15 points after nine rounds, while the Mariners are on eighth after eight games of the competition.
Over in Taiwan, the southern city port of Kaohsiung kicks off the Lantern Festival celebration with a 1,500 drone lights display. The light spectacle features 3D motifs such as a rotating earth and a tiger god to mark the year of the tiger. Let's take a look at this as we wrap up Nightline. I'm Raymond Goh. Thanks for watching and stay safe.